Tenakoto Katoa. Marky here with day three of the book challengey thing. Um, hopefully, it should all be explained in the title and the description. So, uh, I normally wouldn't be thinking of doing a video today because I'm a bit rough around the edges. Um, I'm quite spaced out. I've been quite unwell, which is why I've not, I find it quite difficult to keep up with. Uh, posting. Uh, so apologies for that. The last kind of couple of weeks working from home um, has exacerbated a lot of uh, joint problems that I've got. I'll not talk about joints. Uh, so shoulders and hip have been um, giving me some grief really. And not only kind of causing pain in the, the location but making me generally feel unwell. So um, yeah, so I've been posting a lot lately. I've done loads of posting with the uh, Daily RJ program. Um, I've kind of cut right back, really. But because I've accepted this challenge, I am going to post it today. But kind of, you know, please be aware that I may be even more um, spaced out than I normally am. So, <laughs> um, and I want to see an osteopath today. So, so uh, here the uh, pandemic um lockdown uh, dropped an alert level uh, yesterday um, so for the first time in a long time I've been able to get to see an osteopath uh, which is fantastic uh, so he straightened me out quite literally but I'm feeling and I'm feeling kind of good but bad um, kind of that kind of post-treatment kind of weird feeling that you can get um, so yeah might be a weird one this one bear with me but it's a weird as if I feel a bit kind of um spacey and uh then this this fits with the with the book <laughs> that I want to talk about really um so maybe that's kind of quite apt really I want to talk about a I say a novel uh, I'm going to qualify that called what dreams may come by Richard Matheson Okay, so the first two books that I talked about in this series were non-fiction. This one is fiction, it's a novel, but it's kind of is and it isn't. Um, in the preface, it kind of says that uh, although the characters are fictional, everything else uh, about this uh, from this book is is real, I think is the word it uses. I haven't actually got my copy, I lent it to somebody, so I couldn't refer to it. So, and it actually gives a bibliography, uh, which novels don't normally do, do they? You know, that's what you get in, you know, factual books. Uh, and the bibliography is a list of mainly kind of, um, you know, kind of classics from the spiritualist movement, uh, which talk about the after death experience or the pre life experience, whichever way you want to look at it. Okay. So, Richard Matheson, and I, I struggle with his name, so he's this, one of the, this book is one of the most, um, had the most profound effect on me probably than any other book, and uh, yeah, I still struggle with the name, and I think it's because. Uh, in the town, the town near where I grew up, um, there was a Mattison's factory um, producing meat products, and I kind of um, I always think well, his name can't be Mattison because that's the kind of meat products, and I'm not sure if it's Matheson or Mattison, but there we go. Somebody will can, can enlighten me on that. Uh, maybe I'm not sure if he, if he's alive or if he's if he's passed. He wrote uh, I Am Legend as well. Uh, which came a film, I think that was with Will Smith, um, and he's written loads of stuff, I mean, loads of, um, loads of kind of, mainly kind of horror film type stuff, whereas this uh, is a, a lot deeper, really, than, than some of the, some of the stuff certainly I've seen that from, from his films, or from stuff that's been made into films from his work, and uh, it's a journey um, into the afterlife, um, wrapped around a, a real tragedy of a story. Okay, so I'm going to give spoilers in, in this. Um, so uh, you may have seen the film with Robin Williams. Um, so this is this is where it comes from. Uh, so why is it called What Dreams May Come? Uh, that is uh, from uh, Hamlet, uh, from the famous to be or not to be uh, soliloquy. Uh, I was going to say sketch then. <laughs> See, I'm not quite with it. <laughs> Famous sketch by Shakespeare. Um, which is talking about suicide. Um, and um, uh, I think the line is uh, to sleep, perchance to dream. Um, what dreams may come. There's the rub. 
Um, I've got that all in the wrong order, but they're, they're a little bit like Carrick Morecambe, you know, all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. So it's talking about really, uh, you know, uh, so the Hamlet kind of speech is about, you know, uh, I'm feeling terrible. Um, if I kill myself, will that, you know, is that the right, is A, is that the right thing to do? B, you know, um, supposing, you know, uh, supposing the suffering continues after death. Okay, because there, and this is where the, there is a kind of spiritual taboo against suicide in a lot of different cultures and traditions. Okay, because the fear is that you know suicide doesn't actually end your suffering, that you actually kind of uh, it sends you to an afterlife where your suffering is maybe even magnified. Um, and certainly, like you know, in Christianity, there's lots of beliefs about you know being immortal, with Catholicism, mortal sin, suicide, and things like that. And suicide features in this novel. And so uh, how do we start? Okay, so basically, um, I, uh, keep it very, very simple. And it is a long time since I've read this and haven't had the book around to refresh my memory. The, the novel is slightly different to the, to the film. Um, a guy dies, uh, goes to, it takes a while to move on. Um, so there's some beliefs about, and I've covered this in other videos, and the one I did on ghosts, that uh, there's a belief that's, that when we die, we move on to, to other, another place. Um, but sometimes we get stuck on the earth because things hold us back. And one of the things that happens with him is his, his wife really struggles badly with, uh, with grief. Um, and that prevents him from moving on for quite some time. And eventually he does move on into uh, basically what we would call heaven. Um, but it's not quite the same as the kind of the classic kind of Christian concept of heaven. And it's referred to as the Summerlands. And the Summerlands is a realm where, an after, after death realm, where uh, we can create our own reality around us. So what we think about and what we imagine, um, we can actually produce, you know, in, um, in kind of seemingly kind of solid material around us. Um, so he has to uh, learn how to adjust to to this this new life in in paradise, um, and he has uh, people that he knows he knew from life that greet him there and help him with the with the process. Okay, so it's quite interesting. The film is very um, you know it's very beautiful. It's um, and it brings it to life very graphically. Um, so, so he's in he's in basically paradise now. Um, it's not quite the same as as the Christian heaven. It's probably, uh, I mean, there's lots of different kind of you know concepts of heaven. So, like the the Eastern religions have, uh, they tend to have heavens and hells rather than heaven and hell. And in the Eastern religions, uh, hell isn't necessarily a place that you go to permanently. In Christianity and uh, Christian tradition, is very much kind of like eternal, um, and heaven is eternal. But in some of the other traditions, um, people kind of go to heaven, heavens, um, sometimes for a, a certain amount of time, and then are, they're reincarnated um, in another form or in another life, and 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 such like. So, so it's not it's not kind of following the kind of you know the the Christian um, paradigm. Um, although there's lots of things that are very, would be very similar to that, really. So it is a paradise. Um, but it is also a place where you can access the Akashic Records, which is you know, very much a, a kind of Eastern uh, belief. Uh, I won't go into that today. You can um, Google that if you want to check out the, the Akashic Records. So, lovely. He's, he's in the afterlife, um, you know, having a nice little time. But uh, he's not, really, because he discovers that his wife has... His widow has committed suicide, and um, he uh, he also discovers uh, that she is effectively in hell. Okay, but again, it's not like, like the kind of Christian hell. It's kind of uh, again, it's about you know what we expect, what we think we deserve, uh, our psychology, um, what we project around us. So it's a kind of a, a self-created hell. So the the premise of this is that kind of there is no. Um, governing body <laughs> there is no deity that sends us to heaven or hell that we kind of um our mental state and our spiritual state is what would attract us to the the realm that most suits our mindset and our vibration if we want to use that term so he's thinking well you know he, he discovers that she's in hell uh, and he's thinking, well, you know, this isn't going to be heaven for me if, if you know, if my, you know, beloved is in hell, I want to get her out. And, and the fellow kind of spirits around him kind of say, well, you know, that's not really, you know, that's not really kind of 
the done thing, you know. But there are, there is, you know, in this, there is, there are people called uh, psychopomps. I'm not sure if they use the term psychopomps in the book, um, but people who who actually will do that kind of work. They'll try and rescue lost souls um, from hell, and he embarks upon a journey to quite quite literally rescue her from hell. And uh, now hell isn't like a Hell isn't in a different place uh, or at a different plane of existence to where he is. It's in the same plane of existence. So, so where he, the realm that he's in, the the, the Summerlands, is kind of um, continuous with uh, other realms or, or other. Well, I suppose you know, think of it like the world, really. You know that you, um, you know, the same country. You have a uh, city and you have countryside and you have coast, uh, and you can walk from one to the other. Um, so if you imagine, you know, like this, this is like a land, you know, it's, it's, it, it feels and has the, all the attributes of a, of a, of a landscape of like, a, you know, uh, of being on a planet or being on the earth, but you've got, um, heavenly parts, but if you, if you actually, um, journey far enough, the heavenly parts start to kind of get a little bit less heavenly and then they start to kind of get kind of very mediocre and then they start to get horrible and then they start to get really horrible. Uh, so he uh, he enlists the help of uh, this psychopomp, who and they journey. Their whole purpose is that they journey to hell to rescue uh, rescue his wife. And the big fear is that hell is so convincing and it, it messes with your head because it's so real, even though it's kind of not real. Um, it's you know it's a creation of our minds that. Uh, if you go there, you can actually just forget who you are and get lost and remain there, kind of, kind of I think, effectively forever. Um, so, uh, so it's literally a kind of a walk from um, a journey from heaven to hell, uh, a rescue. So it's a rescue story, really. Um, and when he gets to her, she, you know, it's, it's, it's quite difficult for her to recognise him. She's so lost uh, in her own kind of um distorted world she's in this very literally very dark very scary very lonely place and he's told that if he spends too long talking to her trying to kind of persuade her that she doesn't have to be there that it's only her thoughts that are keeping her there uh that he will buy into her reality to the extent that he'll be lost there forever as well okay uh so i'm not gonna tell you what happens next i, I, I kind of spoilt it enough um why do why do I like it? Why is it why has this had such a profound effect upon me? Um and I know the answer to this and, and this is again this ties in very much with um with well, personal experience and uh professional experience in that I know um you know, I have no doubts whatsoever. I am very, very uh, clear, both with personal and professional experience, that uh, we create our own heavens or hells in this life um, based on our cognitions, based on our thoughts, based on our beliefs, based on often distorted beliefs, based on uh, beliefs that have uh, had their birth in trauma or abuse or uh, parental messages or societal messages. Um, and people that I work with often in a professional capacity are in hell. They're, they they might not be in a physical hell, but they're in a mental hell. Because uh, if you were to step into their mindscape um, it really wouldn't be a very nice place to be, okay? And as counsellor, psychotherapist, I do step into their mindscape um, and, and walk alongside them, uh, like in the book, uh, and uh, attempt to free them from that dark place through uh, talking therapy, through dialogue, through, you know... Um, but first you have to kind of understand what that place is like and what underpins it and, you know, have the courage to kind of be able to um, psychologically um, and empathically kind of um, take yourself there and be alongside that person. And sometimes uh, you can help them come out of that place, particularly, you know, for people that have longer term therapy. 
because it takes a long time uh, very often. Um, although, you know, people can kind of improve quite quickly by degrees. Um, you know, improvements can be um, can, can come quite quickly, but um, big changes that often take take longer. And also it runs the risk of uh, a part of me being lost in that dark world. Um, and particularly where, you know, as, as every human being, I have my own dark thoughts and my own uh, nightmares and my own distortions and my own traumas, uh, particularly where where they are, you know, have a resonance and a similarity with those of the client, you know, is actually psychic. So it's one of the things I did a series on um, uh, counselling psychotherapy and the title was something like why it's, um, what did I say, why it's a, um, why it's a really bad profession <laughs> to choose, I think, why it's a bad choice of career, because uh, it is dangerous. I don't think I actually covered um, this aspect of it. I think I, I kind of, um, uh, I was talking about some of the other kind of challenges because I, th I was saying, that's it. I was, why is it a good vocation but a bad career or something like that? Um, because you know it's it's an amazing thing to be able to do, uh, a great privilege uh, in many ways, um, and in many ways very re rewarding. But um, it's it's not a wise career choice to go into. You know, if you're looking for a comfortable life, if you're looking for a, uh, uh you know regular employment e you know solid income um simplicity <laughs> um but but this aspect of it this aspect of um you know going into some very dark places because the people that you're helping are in those dark places uh is a big part of it and, and um that's why we have things like clinical supervision and why we have to take care of ourselves and often therapists you know have to have uh lots of therapy um so that's why uh that's why it resonates so strongly with me or well, that's some of the reason uh, some of the reasons why it resonates so strongly with me um because it, it reflects the job that i do um and and almost in a literal way because uh you know although you know this could be perceived as like a fantasy film um you know it's it's actually reflecting a belief system you know, um, and it, and the belief system is that uh, when we die, uh, our thoughts become much stronger and create, you know, I guess it really, we're talking about the astral plane, really. I've done videos on that as well. It's another way of describing um, this, this realm or this reality where thinking uh, actually kind of manifests things around us and there's many people that that believe that that happens as well on the physical plane and it, it kind of it does to an extent you know because there's a lot of self-fulfilling prophecy you know if you if you constantly kind of expect the worst then you probably will start to manifest the worst things happening around you and things like the law of attraction which i've done a video on and all that kind of thing so there's loads of different threads to this loads of different layers to this um what I like is there's kind of different, um, there's lots of kind of connections and threads and overlaps with other, other interests for me in this film. So, for example, uh, there's a goth band called the Fields of the Nephilim, um, which uh, is one of my, they're one of my favourite bands. And they draw on this novel a lot. They've drawn, made lots of songs about the novel and they really... Ver the music is very evocative. It's like mood music. I mean, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I think I'm borderline synesthetic. Um, so when I, I listen to some fields of the Nephilim music, it's kind of um, it's kind of physical. It's kind of three dimensional. It kind of takes me. It kind of conjures up in my mind a very strong sense of uh, landscape um, and you know structure contour. Um, so, so it's, you know, so it's a real, you know, it's a very really in-depth, in it's, it's like a, you know, it's like free drugs, really, listening to <laughs> Fields of the Nephilim. Um, and they've, they've written a couple of songs based on, on this world, on, on this, um, on the, the What Dreams May Come universe, including one that's called What Dreams May Come. Uh, one that's called Last Exit for the Lost, uh, which I've also done a video about. So I like it when things cross over like that, that's, you know, that's, that's kind of very... Um, very magical. So it's um, it's an interesting film. I like, I like the way that uh, sometimes you know people. Certain religions have certain uh, laws and taboos and things like that, and but they're never kind of, kind of fully explained. And I like, uh, I like looking at theories that kind of might 
kind of uh, on an esoteric level might kind of explain what what that really is based upon so the taboo about suicide is you know according to the premise of this book um is not that um you know you'll be cast into hell by a god because god's cross because you know human life is sacred and even your own life is sacred and therefore you know you ha you do not have uh, losing my microphone you do not have the right to to destroy your own life it's more the fact that uh we have that expectation <laughs> um and that guilt and that you know somebody that's that's uh in a place of uh feeling suicidal um is in a very dark place so therefore if they pass into a realm where things uh their thought processes manifest around them the chances are that they're they're not going to be good and it's not going to be pleasant um, not because of, you know, not because of some kind of judgment. So I, I kind of, I kind of find that that quite interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I could I could say more about it. I could I could go on forever about this. I think it's fascinating. I just, I kind of wish I had a what dreams may come buddy really, um, because it's, it's so deep. You know, the music, uh, the songs that I listen to are, are, are very kind of obscure. Um, the uh, the book not that many people have read many many people have, read, have watched the film but a few, you know, I think I've not met many people that have, have read the the book um, and you know I could just you know it's one of those things where I could have one of those conversations that goes on into the wee hours talking about all this uh, it'd be very edifying um, so yeah so if you are equally nerdy about this uh, film <laughs> please <laughs> please make yourself known to me and we will be bosom buddies for. Uh, here on in um so yeah if you want something philosophical uh something that makes you think something that makes you think about you know maybe where some of our beliefs come from maybe where some of our superstitions where some of the religious taboos come from um you know where some of our ideas about the afterlife and um some of the stuff that we do and say that we don't really doesn't really seem to have any logical underpinning um this will get you thinking uh, and it's you know deeply emotional because what could be more, uh, what could have more jeopardy really than getting somebody out of hell? You know that's 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 huge. Uh, so yeah, not uh, not easy reading, not light reading, <laughs> um, but but quite remarkable. Uh, just one um, word of warning, if you like. Um, when I was, uh, I found the start of the book. Uh, a little frustrating um, because it seems to take a long time. I doesn't. It seems to. I, I guess really the character is stuck. He's stuck on the uh, on the afterlife and he's not moving on initially. Um, and and I I guess in a way that's one way in which it's really well written because he's kind of not moving on and he's kind of stuck uh, and he's frustrated. Um, and, and that was my experience in reading the book of like, oh, come on, you know, this is going to go around in circles. You know, I feel kind of like we're not getting anywhere here. I want this story to move on. Um, so there's a period where the story doesn't seem to move on, um, which is where he's stuck. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's a good, a good way to kind of <laughs> experience what that's like, or, you know, get some sense of the, of the protagonist's experience, um, you know, kind of resonating with with that feeling hope that was of interest um i will be back tomorrow uh whether i'm uh well or not uh with another video i haven't even thought about what i'm gonna talk about tomorrow so um but there's loads to choose from there's loads of books that have had a big impact so